Hello everyone, so my name is Alex and I am going to be showing you a painting on the Owl Cutout Style 3. And as you can see, I have already taken the liberty of drawing on my design that I am going to be painting from. And I did just use pencil, so if you want to take a moment right now to pause the video and draw out what I have here or add anything or take away anything, you are more than welcome to. I'm going to kind of talk about supplies and stuff really quick before we get started. So um, I do just have, you know, a cup of water here. I do have two brushes that I use for um, most paintings that I do, which is a big flat brush and then a more narrow pointed round brush. So I like to use those brushes mainly. Um, this is the 18 inch cutout, so it is pretty large. This does come in um, a 12, 2, and um, a 6 inch. So just depending on the size of the surface, depends on the size of the brush. I also have um, a few colors here. I have a kind of just generic brown, a little black, some white, and some orange. And these are the colors that I'm going to be using today, but you are more than welcome to use any other sort of colors. You can make it really colorful, you can make it pink or blue. Just for this particular painting, I am going to be using just these more neutral colors. So um, in this video, I am also going to be discussing more calligraphy based painting techniques. So um, that's going to be any writing and sayings. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I use when I am writing with paints because it is a little bit trickier. So if you would like to add any words to this painting, I'm going to be adding words to mine, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, a brush that I like to use a lot is this brush here. It's a script brush and it has this very long bristle at the end here and it's really good for writing if you're doing any like, uh, you know, script style letters and stuff like that. So I always like to keep this on hand. Um, if you are a little more nervous to use a brush for writing, I definitely recommend using paint brushes. I mean, um, paint markers, excuse me. So, um, I got this brand from Walmart and it comes in all the colors that you need. Um, I just have black and white here because that's mostly what I use to write. Um, and they come in different tips. This is a fine tip one. So if you're looking for an easier way to write stuff on your boards, um, this paint pen is like literally perfect for it. All you got to do is shake it, pump it, and then it's ready to go. So I will show you um, both techniques with the brush and with the pen today. Okay, so for the very first step here, we are going to um, get our brown on here everywhere. So I'm going to be doing this brown in all of these areas here around the eyes. And I'm going to add this brown with some white when I do the wings and the little tummy and around the eyes. So this is going to be a lighter brown that matches the tummy and the wings. And then this circle here is going to end up being painted white. And then we will add a little black pupil in there. So that is why I have two circles for each side. Um, and then I will do orange for the beak um, to more towards the end. So we're going to just go ahead and start mapping some stuff out. So I'm going to be using my big brush for this. I want to make sure that it gets nice and dry before I get started. And what I'm going to do is um, grab some of that brown on my plate and I'm going to just go ahead and start adding the paints on here. And this wood does absorb a lot of the paint. So if you feel like you maybe want more layers or if you want to just like kind of keep going over stuff, then you're absolutely more than welcome to. The paint does dry very fast. Acrylic paint is a fast drying paint. And that is what I'm using today. So I'm just kind of taking this around here. And you're more than welcome to speed up the video if you're kind of breezing through this. I'll probably end up putting a time lapse here just to speed things along and just to show you where I'm placing the brown. So these are all the areas of brown that I am going to be painting. If I did get some of the brown into this part here or anywhere else, that is okay because we're just going to cover it up anyway. So um, I'm going to just do one more little layer of brown all around here and then we will move on to the other brown. Thank you. 
Once I have all of the brown on here, if you want to pause the video while you're painting, if you're taking your time, um, this is where I'm at with the darker brown color. But I'm going to go ahead and take that same brown color that I was just using, and I am going to add a little bit of white to it and it's going to lighten it up and it's going to make it just like a little bit more of like a tan color so um this can be as light or as dark as you want it to be but this is going to be going on like i mentioned before both of the wings around the biggest circle of the eyes and then also the tummy area so you can kind of see it's just a lighter brown And if you want it darker than this, lighter than this, I might just um, darken it up a little bit by adding more brown. So if you want it lighter, use more white. And if you want it darker, use more brown. So I have something like that. And then, like I said, this is also going to go around the eyes. And it's okay if you get into that little circle, not a problem. Just like that. And it's okay to get a little bit messy. We can always um, go back with our other colors and clean things up if we need to. Um, so don't worry if you end up making a little bit of a mess because we're going to clean stuff up. So something like that. And then I'm just going to continue on and color in the other wing and the stomach. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause right here and then we'll get back to um, the next step. So this is where I am at now. So I do have um, both browns on here. And like I said, that is going to be a darker brown and then the same brown mixed with white for the lighter areas. So this is what I have right now, and I will be adding more decoration and details and stuff to that a little later. The next thing that we're going to do is color the eyes white, and then I'm also going to go ahead and color the beak of the owl orange, and I will add a little bit of white to that just to thicken it up a bit. So I am going to be using um, my smaller brush here for all of this, just because I have a little more control that way. Sorry about that. So I'm going to grab a little white, and I'm going to start painting on the eyes here. With white paint, you guys want to um, know that the white paint, it's, it's a really great color and it goes on really, really nicely. Um, the one thing about it though is that as it dries, it does dry a little bit more clear and less opaque. So I definitely like to keep a hair dryer um, nearby um, and then I like to use the highest setting and the hottest setting on the hair dryers and that dries um, the paint really really fast because the white paint does need at least like two or three coats especially with the wood boards um, if you were painting this on a canvas you could probably get away with doing less just because um, the paint doesn't get absorbed as much but I'm going to just go ahead and keep painting the eyes white here So we have that and it looks pretty bright on um, camera here but where I'm sitting at it is starting to dry down and get a little more um, see-through so we're just gonna let that dry and then since I already have the white on my brush I'm going to start diving into a little bit of that orange and you can use whatever color you want for the beak it does not have to be orange I'm just using this so I'm going to mix a little bit of white in there orange is another color that is um, a little bit transparent when it first goes on so I always like to add a little bit of white to any paint that just needs a little bit of help being a little bit more opaque and it also lightens it up to soften it a little bit so as you can kind of see it does get just a little bit see-through it is starting to dry um, and you can kind of see that background um, from the board showing through so I am going to take this to a hairdryer um, I'm gonna fully dry the white and the um, beak and then I'm going to come back 
and it will be added another layer of white to the eyes and another layer of orange to the nose. So like I said, again, I do recommend keeping a hairdryer nearby or um, just going to a hairdryer and drying in between layers, especially like this. So I'm gonna go ahead, dry those, add another coat, and then I will be right back for the next steps. All right, so this is where we're at right now. I just got the um, last layer of white and orange on the beak and the eyes. So the next thing that we're going to get into is actually um, writing our little um, message or quote or saying um, on the little belly here of the owl. So one thing I wanna talk about is um, a great way to find um, ideas for different fonts and writing styles. Um, there is a website and it is called dafont.com. That is D a f o n t dot com and they have hundreds and thousands and thousands of different um, font styles that people create and put on the website and um, what I love about the website is that you can pick a font that you like and you can type out the thing that you're going to end up using or like painting or writing or whatever and it will show you how it will look with the words that you are going to be using so I love to use that website all the time for what I'm trying to think of um, different fonts and stuff to use. So for today, I'm going to be using chalk to write on the message here just so you guys can see it a lot better. I would recommend using pencil for you guys because um, sometimes the chalk gets a little too dusty and it leaves a little bit of a film um, after you erase it. Um, chalk does come off with a little bit of water on like a damp rag like I have this one here um, or a paper towel once the paint is dry. But like I said, I'm going to be using this little chalk and if you want, if you have chalk at home, use it. But I, like I said, I'd probably use a pencil if I was just doing this on my own. So the little quote that I'm going to write on here is love who you are, but instead of W-H-O, I'm going to be writing who, H-O-O-O-O, -O -O -O, um, like how an owl says who. So that's just a fun little thing I'm going to add here. But like I said, you're more than welcome to add anything else that you want. So um, I'm going to write this out with the pen um, my chalk here, just like how I would write with a pencil or anything else. And then um, I will go ahead and show you what I have, and then I'll show you some techniques on how to paint it. All right, you guys, so this is what I have written out, and it says love who you are. So um, I'm going to show you techniques with the brush, like how I mentioned before um, in the beginning of the video, and then I'm also going to show you how to use um, the little paint marker here. Now, for the purpose of this, I am going to be um, just doing this writing in black. You could do it in white, you could do it in whatever color you wanted, but I'm going to do black just for teaching purposes. So I am, like I said, I'm going to show you with the brush first. So I just cleaned off this um, really scripted little fine tip brush here. And this is really, really good for um, like doing little line work and then you can press harder to get those uh, more thick and thin lines. So I'm going to show you what that looks like now. I always like to kind of dust off some of the chalk before I get started. But like I said, if you use pencil, then um, that's even better and you're good to go. So I'm going to be dipping into a little bit of black. Another technique that I kind of like to do with um, some paint when I'm writing is if it, the paint's a little thick, then I like to just grab a little touch of water on my brush and add it to the paint that I'm going to be using. And it just thins it out a little bit and it also makes it more like an ink, which is really helpful. So for this um, specific font that I have here, um, I am going to be making thick and thin lines. So I'm gonna start right up at the top here with the love. And I'm going to make this line thinner and I'm going to make this line thicker. So just watch how I kind of do it. I'm going to set the brush to the side here and I'm going to gently kind of paint my first line. And like I said, adding that water really helped um, kind of thin out the paint a little bit. So I have this thinner line here. I'm going back in with some more paint. And then when I come back down and around, I'm just going to do a lot um, heavier of a pressure. So I came up like this, I'm coming down and I'm pressing with the brush, pressing, pressing, pressing. And then as I am done with the letter, I am going to light off the pressure so that I get a thinner line um, when I'm going to start connecting it to the next letter. So just kind of like this. I have that thin line here to that thicker line. It's that kind of um, like really classic um, script kind of font that is really popular these days. So 
Um, pressure is key when you are um, using the brush. So I'm going to show you again. Um, like over here, I'm just going to kind of match this thin line with that first one I made. So I'm going to just kind of stay thin. I'm keeping pressure light, doing something like that. And then I am always referencing um, the font that I have chosen. So I'm looking at my laptop right now at the font and I'm going to um, just kind of try to duplicate as best as I can. It's good to have reference when you are painting. So for this one, um, it's going to be a little bit thicker starting um, with the left side of the O and then it gets a little bit thinner. So what I'm going to do is kind of create that heavier pressed O. I'm using um, more pressure to start this time. I'm going back up and around. I'm going a little bit lighter. When you run out of paint, just start grabbing a little bit more. And I'm going to come back around and meet to the V. So like I said, I have a little thicker of a left side and then it's going to thin itself out. So that's the techniques that I like to use. Um, is just really good pressure and a steady hand. Hold your brush as if you were holding a pencil. Don't hold your hand so far away over here. I like to hold it nice and close so I have really, really good control. Um, so that's kind of a technique that I'm gonna do with the brush. So especially for a more script style fonts, I do prefer a brush over the paint pen. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the writing with the brush here. And then I'm gonna show you the paint pen um, on the more just like regular kind of box lettered um, who over here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with this. So that is the technique with the brush. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my brush back in the water here and for my paint pen I'm going to go ahead and shake it up really good open it up here now if you're getting a fresh one it's going to take a few pumps to get but I just like to use a separate plate or anything um, and I'll just kind of pump the the pen and then when it starts um, coming out with paint then I'm ready to go so for this um, I am doing kind of a combination of two different fonts so the love and the you are the same and then the who is different with the pen it's pretty self-explanatory I'm just going to go directly on to the board right over top of the chalk that I already put on there and I'm just going to start using the paint to draw on my letters here so what's nice about this too is it's really good for lettering like this and you can also thicken up um, your lines too using the pen um, it's kind of the same thing as the brush, except for the brush, you can um, kind of maneuver around the script a little bit easier than with um, just this kind of one line lettering here. Um, I'm not adding any thick and thin lines to the who. I am just going to kind of keep the line relatively the same all the way through. But you can see how easy and quick it is to use this pen. I love this pen. Um, it's a really, really great purchase. Like I said, I got it from Walmart. I also got it in white and they are very opaque and they go on really solid. Um, they don't wipe off or anything like that. They stay really, really good. It is acrylic paint, so um, it is really easy to use. So you can see how fast that just took me to do. Just like that. Now I am going to um, go ahead and continue on with my lettering here. Um, and I'm going to do that again with the brush. Um, I am going to show you ways that you can kind of use the brush and the pen, which I'll also do right here. So um, especially for um, my thinner lines right here, and I'm going to do some thicker lines, um, just like how I did up here, I can use my pen for my thinner lines and then my brush for my thicker lines. So um, if I clean off my brush here, and let's say that I'm going to make this line thicker. What I'll do with my fine tip paintbrush, I mean my paint pen, is I'm going to just where I want it to be thin, I will use the pen. So I want it to be thin right here. And I also kind of want it to be thin at this loop of the U like that, connecting to the O. So you can see I just kind of have that broken up. And then what I can do is take my brush, some of the black paint, and then I want to make this line thicker, so I'm just going to press, 
go around like this and it's that was so quick and easy so if you are having a hard time using um, getting thinner lines with the brush then i for sure recommend using just a paint pen to do the thinner lines and then um, a brush to do the thicker lines so i'm going to go ahead and continue on um, doing that technique with this and then um i am going to move on to the next steps which is going to be kind of finishing up the yellow So this is the finished lettering here. Um, I still have chalk on here, but I will erase that with a little bit of water on a rag. Um, I'm just letting the letters fully dry. So if you have pencil that you were using and you see the pencil line still, just make sure that you do um, erase those with just a pencil eraser um, when you are all done with the painting and it is fully dried. So the next thing we're going to do is start adding some details on here. So I'm going to be using um, this kind of like long more rounded tip brush here um, for the eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a smaller circle that's more closer to the center here um, in both eyes. So I'm gonna do one closer to the center here and one here. And I am just going to be using black paint to do so. Um, if you do have those paint that paint pen here, you can always draw a circle with that first and then go ahead and fill it in. But what I'm going to do is with the brush, Painting this circle more towards the center. So if I'm on the right eye, like I'm doing right now, then um, I will just do the opposite on the left eye. So like that, and it's already looking way cuter, a little more lively. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. Now try to make them as even as you can. Um, if it's not perfect, that's all right. You can always um, use that paint pen to clean up edges and lines and stuff, but I'm just kind of so something like that and it's a little silly his eyes are kind of crossed um i will go back in once this is more dry and i'm going to add little white highlights to the eyes um but for now i'm just going to leave it like that and let it dry so for um decorating details and all that for the owl um i think i'm going to be using um some white to kind of outline um, the main part of the eyes the wings and then this lighter tummy area here um, like I said, I'm going to show you my white paint marker now, but if you want to um, use um, just some white paint and you can use that smaller brush that I was using um, before for the writing, you can do that. But I have my paint pen right here and it's got the white paint and all I'm going to do is just outline any of the area that has the lighter brown, so like that. And if I feel like that's maybe not enough, I will go back in with actual paint and a small brush. I just love to use these paint pens, like I said, it makes them really quick. So I would highly recommend, even if you don't have them this time around, if you plan on doing future cutout paintings, I would definitely recommend getting these. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline the eyes, the stomach, and the wings.
so those are the white lines I'll add it I think it just really cleans everything up and it makes the lines a little cleaner and it um, just brightens up the outline a little bit so this is what I have so far now um, as far as the wings go I'm also going to use this marker to um, add in just a little bit of texture to the wings and stuff like that um, I am going to take a pencil really quick and I am going to draw out what I'm gonna do first so with a pencil for the wings, I've decided I'm going to kind of make these little round little bumps on the wings. You can kind of see that right there, just to give them a little bit of texture in a more fun and kind of cartoony way. So I'm just doing like three bumps or so. And I'm gonna do that on either side. So something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace my lines that I just made. So easy and fast. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And just like that, that took nothing. So. I'm going to, um, if I feel like I need to add more layers and stuff, I absolutely can, and you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to leave this for now. And then anything else I'd want to do, you could always add um, a few extra like little lines. Like we have these kind of feathery um, little points of the ears that the owl has. Um, maybe I'll just go in with a few little tiny dashes to kind of add some texture there. Like that. Maybe in the middle of the forehead, I'll kind of go in. Like I said, that's why I love having this pen because it makes everything way easier. So that's as much probably detail as I'm going to add um, as far as feathers and stuff go. Um, you're more than welcome to add anything else more that you want to. I'm also going to take this white pen here and I'm also going to um, outline the little beak here just because I feel like it now that I'm looking at it it just needs something too since everything else is outlined and I any chance I get I love adding highlights to my my stuff here so especially with like a little animal like this um, I'm gonna add a little white shine onto the beak and I will use um, my paint for this just because it is a little bit um, thicker and it goes on a little bit more glossy so with my thinner my thinner brush here, excuse me, I'm going to take a little bit of white and maybe I'll just add some going one like this. Maybe I'll do like a little dash here or like a little um, circle, but that just adds a nice little highlight and a little shine to the, um, the beak there. And then I'm also going to take um, my um, more medium sized brush here clean it off and I'm going to take a little bit of white and I'm going to add a little dot in each of the pupil. The eyes are um, nice and dry now so maybe I'll go like right here like that and then I'll do the same thing on the other side like that. So now it just makes it a little more alive, gives it a little bit of a gloss to the eye. And then um, anything else that you want to add on here, you're more than welcome to. But I think that this is just a nice, fast and easy um, little painting to do with this owl. Um, and like I said, the colors you can do are endless and the quotes that you can write are endless. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this completely, get rid of the chalk on here so that you guys can see the full finished look. So this is the final look. All the chalk is erased and it looks nice and clean now. Um, so this is going to be it for this video here. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that some of the techniques with painting letters and words helped you guys. And I hope to see you in more of my videos soon. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and good luck painting. Have fun.